good morning and welcome back to the channel so we've come over to Leeds to Leeds wildlife hides um, we've come with one thing um, that we're aiming to achieve and that's to photograph a sparrowhawk I've been following this uh, this hide for, for a number of months now on Facebook and I've seen that they're starting to get some really good photographs of, of sparrowhawk so I thought that I would come over today and see if we could if we could achieve a few shots at a sparrowhawk I'm not on my own now I've come with the one and only Pops good morning um, it, we, we've arrived here very early uh, the lights not particularly great outside at all um, we, we're just at about eight o'clock there's a thick fog down um, we're just setting up the cameras getting everything together getting my vlogging kit together and my dad tapping me on the shoulder and we look outside the sparrow hawk's already there it's on, on one of the posts so i've rattled off a couple of photographs i've got very little video if i'm honest um, but i'll put those up on the screen now so you can see them So as you can see, light not perfect, um, but we've got some photographs of our target species and I'm just hoping now that it does come back again uh, at different points in the day as it brightens up and gets, gets a little bit better for photography. So come along for the journey and see what we see. So I'll just talk you through the setup. Um, we're in a, in, in a shed, got two portholes out the front of it. Um, we've got a reflection pool in front of us and there are plenty of songbirds coming down to that i'd be taking photographs now only it's still a little dark but there's plenty of songbirds coming down to the to the reflection pool and then he's got a series of various different perches that have been set up all natural perches all perfectly positioned um, and then they've got off, uh, often little seed pots on the back of them um, just to bring the, to bring the birds in and um, so lots and lots of different opportunities for us here um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting and to have had the sparrow rock we've only closed the door for about two minutes and it's appeared so i'm hoping it does come back and that's not that's not the only showing for the day <laughs> but yeah it's been fantastic So we've not even been in an hour. We've only done about 40 minutes and we've already had um, a sparrowhawk, jays, countless woodland birds, all your little songbirds. Um, it's, been, it's been incredible. He's really got a good setup here. Lots of variation, lots of different birds coming in, really regular. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so I'm just gonna talk very quickly about kit. So both. Um, me and Pops are both using the, the Nikon Z9 um, at the moment we've both got 70 to 200 2.8 on we've got two times converters at the side of us if we need to put those on um, I've got the 500mm Prime in addition to that and my dad's got the 500mm PF Prime in addition to that um, so we've got quite a, a, a range I would say though you would probably be better with um, a zoom lens something like the 200 to 500 to give you that that um, variation of focal length uh, for something like this um, but we're getting great shots with the 70 to 200 and um, it's just the light's not particularly great at this moment in time right the jay's coming back in so i'm going
So Pops, do you want to talk about your settings and, and what you're doing with your camera? Right, okay, well, I've got my uh, 70 to 200 uh, Z lens on my Z9. Uh, at the moment, I've got it on uh, manual, so I'm setting the speed. I'm using, at the moment, about 100th of a second at f2.8, which is giving me an ISO, which is on automatic at 320. Um, but I'll alter that as and when uh, the light changes. Um, I've got it on uh, FX mode at the moment, um, but I have got the option with the Z9 to put it on DX if I need to. And that's about my settings at the moment. And how are you doing the uh, the focusing? What are you doing with your auto focusing on your Z9? My, my focusing is on uh, wide I wide area um, and 3D tracking as well so that once I've locked onto the bird the 3D tracking takes over and locks onto the eyes which is very good at the moment with this um, um, upgrade that they've uh, just uh, announced that Nikon have done the um, firmware 3 uh, is it yeah three? firmware 3 um, I think um, the, the uh, 3D tracking is very sticky um, and is working much better than when I originally got the Z9 Mind you, that could have been a bit of uh, user inexperience as well. Definitely. So I'm just going to go through um, my settings now. Um, I'm also, same same camera, same lens as my dad. Um, and I'm also in shooting manual with auto ISO. So the ISO adjusts um, automatically. The camera does that bit, but I keep my eye on that. It's, you know, it's something that you do have to keep an eye on. Don't think that that's a magic setting because it's not... If the ISO pushes too high, then I need to adjust to that. Um, and I'm adjusting my aperture and my shutter speed all the time based on what's in front of me. And just as my dad's doing, I'm switching between FX and DX mode um, so that it crops in and just gives me that little bit of extra reach. Um, my focusing that I've got set up is just slightly different to my dad's. So I'm just going to talk you through that now. Um, and I'm going to try and show you on the back of the camera how I do that. So... Um, I've got it set up currently where I've got it on a post here and the way that I do it is I've got back button focus here and when I press the back button focus you should be able to see at the top here if it will, if it will show it is that that fit switches to 3D so my back button focus which is here is operating the 3D tracking the top button here when I half press that that uses wide area small. So what I'll often do is I will paint the, the subject with the, with the wide area small. That operates on whatever's closest to the, uh, to the camera. It'll lock on that. And then often you'll get a little uh, white, white square that jumps out of that box. That's where the 3D tracking's available. And then I'll switch to the, the 3D tracking with the back button focus. So I'm switching between those two all the time. Um, you've also got some um, uh, programmable function buttons on the front. You've got three. And the top button, I don't know whether I can show you on here, when I press that, it goes to um, single point focus, just like I would have had on my D500. So I can switch to deep, uh, single point focus, half press the shutter button, and that'll focus on whatever's in that single point. Um, so I, I find that at times when the 3D tracking and the wide area small is struggling, I've got that opportunity to switch to the, the um, single point focusing, which is a, a focus focusing mode that I'm very used to because that's what I used with my DSLR, my D500. So it, it's very native to me. Um, and I find switching between the three there gives me absolute optimal chances of getting that shot. Well, we've waited um, a couple of hours now and the Sparrow Walk has done another show. Uh, absolutely fantastic. It flew into the uh, branch to the side. In fact, we knew it had arrived before we could see it because all of a sudden all the, the small birds scattered ridiculously quick. 
um, there was lots of squawking I actually thought it had taken a bird above us on the hide um, I couldn't see it we were like scrambling looking around for it and then it appeared on one of the perches to the right hand side it stayed there for a while then it flew off then it came back in hopped to, to the centre perch which is where I think we probably got some of our best shots directly in front of us with a lovely blurred out background and then it dropped down onto the reflection pool um, breathtaking absolutely breathtaking to be that close to a, to a sparrowhawk you know it's not tame it's a, it's a, a wild bird uh, and an absolute beast of a predator uh, you know it's it's eyesight you can see those eyes they just you know that it's absolutely sensational at what it does so incredible experience what are your thoughts pops oh it's just absolutely awesome um, as i've just said we, we've been on bird of prey uh, workshops where birds have been presented to us and i didn't get half the amount of excitement seeing a wild sparrowhawk land right in front of us it was just breathtaking as you said beautiful beautiful bird so fingers crossed it might come back So I thought I'd just uh, talk you through the setup here um, that Ian has put on for us at Leeds Wildlife Hides. Um, I have to say as, as hides go this has probably been the most comfortable hide I've ever been in. There's a little heater, a little gas heater that's that's chugging away so it's not cold in the slightest. Rather than bean bags, um, I'll just show you you've got these big chunky pieces of foam. They do a great job, I'd say they're much better than a bean bag to be honest with you. Um, it leaves you with plenty of um, seed and peanuts and suet and all those kinds of things and um, so you can top up the, the feeds as you go on um, and, and he's, he's on hand via a text message at any point during the day to help you out so absolutely first class setup um, somewhere I would definitely recommend other people to come and have a look at and a reasonable price as well yeah yeah it Very is reasonable as, as high it goes this is um down down there with the best value for money I would say. Yeah, I'd agree with you Dad. Yeah. Definitely so. So we've just had a, another showing from the Sparrowhawk. Um, we've probably lost the best of the light now, so we've decided to call it a day. Thoughts on the day, Pops? Oh, just absolutely awesome. Fabulous experience. That Sparrowhawk was just something else, wasn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous bird. Yeah, just just, just breathtaking, really. Um, that, that last showing that we had of it then was, was brilliant. I'm, I'm fingers crossed on the back of the camera it looked like I've got some some shots of it in flight if I have I've either put them up on the video already but if not enjoy these <laughs>
so that's the end of this video hope you've enjoyed it if you have please click like um, if you could subscribe that would be great about 70% of, of my viewers aren't subscri subscribers it costs you nothing um, and it helps the channel massively so if you could subscribe I'd really appreciate it and until next time ta -ra.